Some what was the ways. first? I think you're the person to ask this question. What was the first trail centre you knew of, heard of, or had anything to do with? So the first trail centre that I really, I guess the first one I rode was Kum Khan after it had been built. But I was aware of like, you know, the birthplace of trail centres was Coidy Brennan. Ah, was, is that so? Yeah. Yeah. So North Wales. Okay. I didn't actually know that. That was the first one. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. So there's a guy, um, he worked for Forest Commission at the time. Um, and he sort of had this brainchild of creating a, you know, purpose-built tr- trail for mountain biking. Mm. Um, David Davis, his name is. And yeah, he he's not in the scene now, but he was like really well known. I think he's got an MBE or something off the back of doing it, you know, because he right. kind of created this model, which... You know, we've ended up with trail centres right across England, Wales and Scotland. Um, but yeah, it was a number of years later that sort of concept like rolled out and then it came to South Wales and we had Kum Khan and Avonargoid. So yeah, that was my like first exposure to that type of riding. Out of interest, do you know what his angle was? Was it, was it a biking angle? Was it like a, a tourism angle? Was it a... I think it was primarily like biking, like understanding yeah. that there was a need to create something to get people out there. He also wanted to create something that was like pretty sustainable. Um, and then obviously with that, it's the, it's the tourism and getting people out and, and bringing people to areas that maybe they otherwise wouldn't travel to. Yeah. So that's where you get like the wider benefits. Mm. Do you know the history of that? Like what, obviously that was the first one in the UK. What's, if you go further back, do you know like where was the first trail centre and... Trail centres really are a, a, is a UK con- born is really, concept. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You, you know, go. like every country's got their their own story, you know, and their own development of the sport and development of mountain biking. Mm. But, you know, in the UK we had cross-country racing, you know, downhill racing, like in the sort of mid-late 90s. And then, you know, trail centres sort of kick-started that. Right. Like more mass participation, I suppose. Yeah. And then obviously as the sport has evolved, like there was a need for more and that's how things have progressed on from there. Interesting. So so most countries have, have sort of copied the UK model that was built by someone like da- David? David Davis, David, yeah. David Davis. Right. Yeah, I would say so. I'd say a lot of com- uh, countries have then looked at that as a model and, yeah. and taken it and applied it themselves, mm. you know, outside of the ski resort model. Yeah, you know, where you've yeah. got a ski lift and you can you can run a bike park. Yeah, type. they'll have come obviously yeah, way bike before park. a yeah. bike park. But I met a guy, um, became really good friends with him. Did did a lot of work for him. Who's from Czech Republic, right? And he came over to Wales quite a long time ago now. And he just he he'd heard about it online or or read about it. And he came and visited like North Wales and South Wales. Rode all these spots and was like, I need to do this where I'm from. Yeah. And he like took the best parts of that. Um, took it to his village in the Czech Republic, which is just like a sleepy rural town, like no tourism at all, <laughs> a lot of unemployment, yeah. like really difficult sort of conditions if you grew up there as a young person. Mm. Um, he got in touch with me and, and said, "Could you know, would I be up for working? And, and his English was terrible that time. It was just <laughs> like this mad email. I just remember like, it was just something about it. You're like, this feels really genuine. Yeah. Like I need to get on the plane and go and meet this guy. Because yeah. he's like, you need to get on the plane and come and meet me. And so Sick. that's what happened. And we just went to his local pub and spoke about it and he showed me his hill. And yeah, and then I got involved with that. And that was amazing just to see that journey in that, in a different context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like going back there, they went from, I think they had one like sort of B&B type place. And then a few years later with, he like he was a, really driven guy you know mm. he's really sort of made this um amazing facility and then you know, could go back a few years later and there's like 300 bed spaces oh. and like three pubs and Rad. it's that bikes everywhere you know and it's it's yeah. just totally changed that area and i think that's what's rad about bikes now it could, you can do that yeah true what when did when did you become motivated to do that like you you visited kim khan saw kind of the potential at what point did you start sort of thinking about track building and doing that yeah. stuff? Um, a lot earlier, I think, than that. Was it? So probably subconsciously, some of it. Like yeah. my first, f- 
first ever trip to France was like a yeah uh, an eye opening <laughs> moment. You know, you go to Leger and that was before um, YouTube, before social media. So you don't know what's out there. Wow, you know, it's just yeah. like you've heard that it's a good place to go and ride downhill, but you can't view it in the same way you can now. So yeah, actually go in there. It's like I think it was my first. It's my second time abroad ever with a bike. Yeah, um, you're young, yeah. Yeah, I was. I think I was twenty. Okay, yeah, so I wasn't super young, but yeah, yeah. and um, blew my mind. I was just like, <laughs> this is the dream, you know. Your chairlifts, downhill bikes, and the riding was really good. Um, so I think straight away I was thinking, like where I live, the topography. There's there's something there. Like mm. you could have chairlifts across valleys. You know, I was sort of young, inexperienced, but like that big picture idea of like, well, why couldn't you have Port de Sole and south wales in the valleys so mm. i guess straight away there's sort of some visions and ideas yeah. but i didn't know how to like navigate any of that at that point um and then w i went to union leeds and met up with um phil saxena do yeah. you know phil yeah legend top bloke <laughs> um and he was already like sort of getting into trail building a little bit himself and long story short we ended up building the first ever four cross track yeah i was Fort just about William. to say yeah four cross track yeah so it's yeah. 2002 that was right um so F phil like had the the contract and he said you know could i get involved or would i like to get involved help him out do the testing jump yeah. building and all that so that was my first exposure to like doing it i suppose yeah. and at that point it was just a sideline thing that i went and did but straight yeah. away i was like I love this. I'm into this. You know, I feel like it's something I can bring something to as well. Yeah. So that was definitely like a, a, a moment where I felt I have a skill set that I can use in a uh, in a way going forward. But still, at that point, you know, it, it all had to unfold these things, and it takes time. And um, yeah, after that, I ended up working in Mojo for a few years. Right. Um, and then I think Martin mentioned it before, me and Martin ended up working together building the Kumkan downhill track right. with well, Dunk go, yeah. as well. Um, and that was, I would say that's probably the turning point then. Right, where, okay. where I was like, okay, this is something. We just had this like fixed short-term contract. Yeah, We all jumped at the opportunity, but we didn't know what we were going to do afterwards. So I guess it's stuck, the motivation almost starts off like you're literally building stuff that you want to ride, aren't you? It's like... It starts off being like, I want to build a track, doesn't it? Yeah. And then it slowly moves towards a, I don't know, like, it strikes me how much difference um, Bike Park Wales has made locally. Mm. Like, at what point did that, did you notice that it was making a big difference when you started building these trail centres and stuff? Yeah, it, 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 I probably noticed that... Um through the work I was doing with my trail building company. Yeah. So before Bike Park Wales, going back it's like 20 years ago, 2004, I set up um, Back on Track, so yeah. a trail building company. And we got, the work at that point was generally like trail center based work. So you weren't necessarily building what I wanted to ride. Yeah. So yeah. straight away, <laughs> I would, like that was the difference between you going out yeah, and building yeah, yeah, yeah. with your mates, yeah. doing what you want to build yeah. to like this is a job this is a career i've got to deliver what the client wants mm. but i always had kind of a vision of trying to bring try and bring those two slightly closer together th than where they were okay um and what was it though like right, what were you been asked to build and what were you trying to build okay at that point so it's probably quite hard to <laughs> imagine this right yeah. now but when i first started that company and as started trail building there were no berms on any trails <laughs> in the uk <laughs> is that right like i genuinely like if you went to a trail center there were zero berms whatever country you you know whether in scotland england or wales right you might get them on a downhill racetrack yeah but none and i was <laughs> why like, do you think that is was it just not a thing it or was just time the, the vision and the concept of like if you like those forefathers of, of the sport, yeah, which they've yeah, done yeah. an amazing job to create this um, network of trails that got everyone into it, but they didn't see that as like a way of doing things and the trail being sustainable. Right, yeah. Okay, 
Okay. Hey, man, what an episode that was. You did amazing in it. And so did you. You shone like a star. You shone like a moon. Can we also put something up here that you can click on for the next episode? How about we put a subscribe up there in the middle? Yeah, lovely. We're going to put a video we think that our uh, lovely companionship will love on your face. On my face? Yeah. So you can't see me now? Gone. And on my face, another video that we think people will love. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please hit like and subscribe. You guys are the best. Peace and love.